feelings. Um, my name is Dawn Dubé. My job title is School Ready. If everyone could just mute, there we go. Okay. Um, my job title is School Readiness Coordinator for Middletown Public Schools. I oversee the grant funds from the Office of Early Childhood, which is a grant that makes preschool affordable for families while maintaining high quality experiences for children. Within my role, I get to work with a team, an amazing team on district initiatives and build bridges among stakeholders and providers in Middletown. Um, in Middletown, you may or may not have heard Dr. Michael Connor speak this evening. Um, he is my superintendent and he is a very unique superintendent in that he invests time, expertise and funding into all early childhood education programs in town and, um, and the initiatives that we have currently taking place. And with the understanding that if we truly wanna close our achievement gap, we have to start with our babies and close the preparation gap. We are ready in our town and state um, and optimistic about the changes that we are hopeful to see in our very fragile early childhood system. Um, it's been long overdue. We know there's plenty of studies, including the Perry Preschool Project that demonstrates the return on investment when we invest in high quality early childhood experiences and increase opportunity and access. Okay. So what to expect from this session this is what our agenda looks like. And it, it's very, um, it is loose in that if you have questions or comments or things that you'd like to offer and share, please by all means do so. Um, we're gonna do a grounding practice after this slide. We're going to have an overview of Early Minds 2022, which is the name of our early childhood strategic plan. And I'll give you an overview of our goals and strategies. Then we're going to talk about two main initiatives that Middletown has um, been working hard on. And one is the digital liter literacy solution, which we call Bridge to Brilliance. We will have a short breakout room just for some fun to come back with a whole group discussion. And then we're going to talk about another initiative, which we call Purposeful Play Executive Function Project. And we'll wrap up with some takeaways. Um, while I am here with you, my intention is to plant some seeds about the work that we are doing. And then hopefully if there's something that's of interest to you, that you reach out and we could connect and talk deep, talk further about um, what your town is doing, what your family or your district is doing, and we can come together to connect because we're always looking to build more connections um, to be more successful. Balance is weaved throughout all of our work. So you're gonna see that throughout the presentation. Um, balance and our journey. So let's take a moment. Um, before we begin, let's ground ourselves into this session and just kind of leave the remainder of whatever has happened in your day. Um, if you had any kind of stress, let's just let that be. Um, this is one of the tools that we use in our early childhood sessions, and we do focus a lot um, on using yoga and mindfulness as some tools, some social emotional learning tools that can anchor us in the moment. Um, when we practice yoga and mindfulness, we are thinking about the relationships we have with children, with others around us, and we're teaching how to pay attention versus just expecting children to pay attention. Um, so we're gonna start. Let's first find ourselves in a comfortable position. And you don't have to do this if you choose not to, it's just simply an invitation. But if you can notice your feet on the ground and the contact that you're making with your chair or wherever you're sitting. And we're gonna take our hand and we're gonna do our five finger breathing. So you're gonna take one finger, your pointer finger, and you're gonna trace up one finger and you're gonna to count to five. And as you count to five, you're gonna breathe in through your nose, pause at the top, and then exhale as you travel down your finger. Okay, this will help ground us into the moment. And let's go ahead and take a deep breath in, trace that finger up to the top, pause and let it go. And continue through all of your fingers. We 
invitation to close your eyes if that feels good. And checking in and notice how you're feeling. Hopefully you are a little more relaxed. You can do that as many times as you need to. And obviously you can do that with children in your classroom, or if you're a parent, do that with your children. Um, I personally was lucky and took time to go through the Mindful Schools teacher certification program. And a big takeaway is that the teacher is the intervention for children um, and the classroom setting, especially when they're dysregulated. So it's a nice reminder to check in with ourselves um, before we check in with our children and that we can share our calm versus our stress um, and anxiety. So hopefully you are here with me and feeling somewhat grounded. All right, and Sheila, if you see anything that jumps out as something I should address, please just let me know. Okay, so in the Middletown Public Schools, we have in a district strategic plan and within our district strategic plan we've made it a priority to also make a separate early childhood strategic plan and what do we know well we know um, that there are big benefits to investing in early childhood development um, professor james heckman lots of research is growing um, we go back to this often as we know that improving the economy um, strengthening the middle class, reducing the deficit, our national priorities, solving these challenges starts with investing in America's greatest resource, which is our people and, and children. Um, quality early learning and development programs for disadvantaged children can foster valuable skills, strengthen our workforce, grow our economy, and reduce social spending. These are things that you all know, and this is how, one through four. So this is the big picture and why we are here and choosing to invest in early childhood in Middletown Public Schools. So within our early childhood strategic plan, we focused on three goals. Throughout the session, I will share key strategies that we've been implementing in an effort to achieve these three goals. The two main strategies, again, that I plan to share is our play-based um, project, as well as the digital literacy solution. Both of these are comprehensive strategies that are ensuring children are ready for kindergarten. And we're striving always to make equitable experiences um, for our families and increase access, um, which we know is, is a challenge throughout our country, increasing access for children. Okay. In Middletown, within our early childhood land, we have many partnerships that help make us successful. Um, and again, keeping in mind that this plan that we created is a framework. Um, within this framework, although we have had a lot of people come together and there's a lot of solid um, research and work that's happening within the plan, this is still a journey and it, ta it's it takes time. Um, but without the support of these partners, we would we would be struggling. And so we're very grateful and fortunate that we have the support of all of these partnerships in Middletown that come together to improve the lives of children and families. Um, we really do have a robust, um, it's a robust system. We, um, I'm gonna share with you next, some of our little bit about our programs to get a little more detail. So, Within our early childhood settings, we have a we have many, many different systems um, of delivery for children and families. And we, we do believe this mixed delivery system, um, which includes public schools, family child care, center based care, family, um, family centers, neighbors, that this all provides families with options that work for them. So families need to trust the center, as we know. Um, or trust the home. And the, the pandemic has shown, has really shown light on the challenges that we face. Um, we have over a hundred children who were not enrolled in a program this year. Um, 
due to COVID per what the parents have said. Um, and so the balance that we have within our town is that we all learn something from one another. So every single space has something to offer. There's not a program that's better than another. Um, we really do learn from each other, which has been really a wonderful thing. Um, this is a slide that shows an example of a community partnership that we have um, in town. And um, Beverly Lawrence and Monica Bellier are both members of our School Readiness Council and they are community members and they're striving to share um, a program called The Basics, which is something very, very simple um, for families. And it's also, it's showing that we recognize and we value that families and parents are their child's first teacher. Um, we don't talk to families as if we have all the answers. We don't We come together to partner, um, to connect and support. And really, again, back to the basics, that simple supporting families with the serve and return and um, just being there and showing love for your child and smiling and reading and cooing, all those things um, really do support our brain, chi our child's brain, brain development. Okay. So we are going to move into some of our um, big initiatives that our goals, um, we've looked at our goals and, and thought what strategies could we implement in Middletown to ensure that all children are prepared for kindergarten. Um, and so a big part of our early childhood strategic plan, again, is to increase access and equity. And how could we do that? So um, we were introduced to Eileen Rosenthal, who was um, wonderful and shared with us a ex very exciting digital literacy solution that she had created with a team of people. Um, and so we're going on almost year three of utilizing um, this very exciting program. And so I'm gonna show you a short video. Um, and what this does is this, ensures, well, is striving to ensure um, as a team that each and every family has a full library in their home. And so that each and every classroom in Middletown, should they participate in this initiative, has a full library. It is a digital library. Um, and so initially there was uh, some questions from people like, how do we ensure that this is okay for preschoolers to be using technology? and um, what we found was many, many studies showing that children are looking at their family's phone um, in the food store or at the doctor's office, they're on the phone. Um, so how can we make this a healthy experience? And not only that, but this has opened up so much more conversation with families to just to talk about um, a healthy amount of screen time and how what too much screen time, how that can negatively impact our brains. Um, and so this was this is one solution to improve equity. Um, so without further chatting from me, I'm going to have us listen to something different. Um, and hopefully I am all set up so that we can hear this very well. Um, this is a video that was created by our Middletown High School, um, which again, a partnership. Um, the teacher, I, I'm not going to try to pronounce her name because I've tried a few times, it's a challenge, but her and her students came together to create this video to represent the initiative and the work that's being done in the community. So hopefully you can, just let me know if you cannot, um, if you cannot hear this. Hi, my name is Michael Conner and I'm the superintendent of Middletown yeah. Public Schools. And we are proud to bring the Bridge to Brilliance Early Childhood Initiative to Middletown. The primary focus for this initiative is to be able to close the preparation gap as well as the vocabulary gap that's being displayed among our students in the early childhood sector. Uh, this partnership that we're having with Footsteps to Brilliance is bring in artificial intelligence as well as targeted instruction to be able to ensure that all students are moving into kindergarten, kindergarten ready. 
the Middletown community as well as Middletown Public Schools and all of our business and community partners are very excited to bring this initiative here right in Middletown, Connecticut. Good morning, my name is Ed Bonilla. I'm with Middlesex United Way and um, we're very happy and very proud to be a partner with the Bridge to Brilliance um, Early Literacy Initiative. Um, this aligns very nicely with our uh, focus area of early education. We support early, uh, early childhood initiatives throughout Middlesex County and it's so important to support our earliest learners. Um, it just sets the stage for the rest of the, their life. Um, this, this initiative is it's not only important for their future, but for today, for working with the kids today and having the kids work with their families and make learning fun. Um, it's all about learning and, and engaging uh, young people and their parents. Um, education should be a lifelong experience and it should be something that we love to do as we grow and, and we learn. And so this initiative is just one strategy, one step in helping to make that happen for our families. In United Way, we're looking for every opportunity. This is very important to not only support this initiative, but to collaborate and support our school systems as well. The Bridge to Brilliance initiative provides all preschool aged children in Middletown access to kindergarten readiness activities that will prepare them for success in kindergarten. Using the Clever Kids University and Footsteps of Brilliance apps is a fun and motivating way for children to learn basic skills. Children in preschool programs will have access to using these apps throughout the school day and at home with their families. Children who are not in preschool programs have the opportunity to acquire these basic skills by practicing at home with their families. Hello, my name is Vanessa, and I have twin-year-old daughters that are four years old that are currently use the Bridge to Brilliance application. What they definitely enjoy about the application is that they're able to identify the letters in the alphabet, not only just saying the alphabet, as well as identifying numbers in the application. Hi, I'm Kate McCarthy Bond, and I'm from the Russell Library here in Middletown. I'm here to talk about the Footsteps to Brilliance app and our connection with Russell Library. Research shows that from birth to age five, a child's brain develops more than any other time in life. Early brain development lasts, has a lasting impact on a child's ability to learn and succeed in school and life. Library use and educational apps are just two of the many ways in which children develop those early literacy skills necessary to succeed and grow into lifelong learners. Russell Library is a hub for early learning through its literacy events and materials for children birth to grade five. We offer programs that encourage and support brain development through literacy and family engagement. Our goal is to set young children on a path to learning and success that will follow them through life. Hey there everyone, my name is Edward Ford Jr., a member of Middletown Connecticut's Board of Education. I am so excited to talk to you about Bridge to Brilliance, which is Middletown School's new preschool initiative. This initiative is revolutionary for our city, for our community. It is just awesome in spreading access to a quality preschool education all throughout the city. Uh, we understand that equality and equity are two different things, that our students have the ability to achieve and succeed greatly, but they don't always have the same and equal resources. So we're trying to provide those resources now so that we can prepare our children for Middletown Public Schools. I definitely implore you to support this initiative as we'll be doing this for our community, for our kids, and for our future. Thank you. My name is Dawn Dubay and I'm the Middletown School Readiness Coordinator and I'm super excited about the Bridge to Brilliance initiative. This initiative has really allowed a group of community stakeholders come together to show the importance of early childhood and how if we invest early in our children's lives that this will improve the trajectory of their education and the outcomes for success will be greater. One of the important things about this initiative is the fact that children enter kindergarten not fully prepared. About 40% of kids that enter kindergarten are not ready to meet the rigorous demands of the kindergarten curriculum and 90% of brain develops prior to entering kindergarten. So access to these apps and learning the literacy skills and math skills will really support and get them ready and level the playing field as they enter kindergarten. I'm Cliff O'Callaghan, pediatrician at Middlesex Hospital and the residency program, chair of pediatrics at Middlesex, and a community pediatrician. So thank you so much for letting me say a few words about this really important program. As a pediatrician, I'm interested in the health of children 
because they are the future adults that are gonna run this world and be the mayor and the superintendent here. And the way they're gonna get there is by being successful in school. And that starts when they're one, two, and three years of age. So by the time they start kindergarten, they need to be ready. How are they gonna get there? We as parents have to feed their brain. Well, how do we do that? We read, sing, talk, play, and one of the new things that we can do, which is another piece in the puzzle, is using technology appropriately to incentivize and excite our children to be interested in reading. And that's what this is about. Okay, thank you for your patience, everyone. Hold on just a moment. I am getting there, I promise. Okay. All right, so thank you for watching that video. Um, I'm going to take you a little deeper into the evolution of, of this initiative. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to um, put them in the chat. These always go by a little quicker than anticipated. Um, so one of the, um, as I said in one of the earlier slides, we know there's many, many children who are not accessing um, a, a program right now, any kind of an early childhood program. So we work together with our steering committee to ensure that we can get this technology in the hands of families. Um, and so that was just, that was a picture of someone using it with his um, father and sister. And so we called this um, Bridge to Brilliance as we are, you know, we are um, ensuring that children are ready from, for kindergarten. And if you can see in these pictures here, you see all preschool settings. These are community preschool settings. The first photo you see this, we can use the program in a one-to-one -one setting. Um, actually, there's lovely thank you cards, which we weave social emotional learning um, into everything that we can throughout our day, um, writing cards of thanks for the Middletown Public Schools for providing community preschool programs with the technology needed to make sure that this, this program is successful. Um, we see in the center, our South Farms is one of our nursery schools and the children are working on iPads and Kindles. Again, this is all personalized. They're working at their very own pace. And so as they progress through their quote unquote train, which is 26 weeks um, it, aligned with 26 letters, they're all going at their own pace. So when they, every time they log in with their super seeker code, um, they'll pick up where they left off, thereby maximizing their, up, their level of success. You'll notice here in this third photo, um, this lovely lady who is showing, um, who's, my, who's doing a lesson, a footstep. She was one of our trainers who was helping our district get really on the feet, on our feet and using this program successfully. And she was sharing a story with a group of children. And so while that was wonderful, we realized that we actually, we could use more. And so these two photos show a little bit more of the evolution again, so what we realized is that we could really benefit from having some more technology, um, technology upgrades in our community programs in order to make this more equitable and accessible. So while we have in our Board of Education's um, program, we have one preschool program within our school system that's run by the Board of Ed. Um, each classroom has a great deal of technology, including a smart board and several iPads. 
Um, whereas the community programs don't did do not have the resource had that level of resources. So we were able to leverage funds from some grants. Um, and again, with the support of the school district, we were able to provide them with more technology to ensure that this is accessible for them. And again, this is a community program. This is our YMCA um, program at one of our off sites. And here they are. The children are working on her iPad and they are tracing letters and forming letters. And actually, um, I would like to just offer as well, this is a program who had shared that there's always indirect um, effects that happen from using footsteps to brilliance. And we had learned that a family, um, we, had, we had noticed that a child's usage was very, very high and we were almost concerned. We thought, oh goodness, they know they're on the app so long, let's have a conversation. And they did, and they found out that the parent was learning English um, by enjoying the app. So that's another benefit being that it's in English and Spanish that families can learn as well on their own or alongside with their children. Um, we have outreach efforts again to reach the children, especially those that are not in programs. Um, we've been lucky enough to have wonderful marketing materials that we place around town at parks. Um, Pre-COVID, we were able to travel. That's what this is with our bookmobile and distribute materials through the bookmobile. Um, and some lawn signs as well. And now that the nice weather is coming, we will be able to have more outreach happening. Another wonderful piece to this program is that we really are now provided with some rich early childhood data. Um, so again, we have really evolved from the onset of starting using this program. Now we have data that the, the teachers can actually go in and check on the class, the child, the individual progress, and then plan instruction accordingly. Um, so we're grateful to Footsteps that they were able to create this dashboard um, that has been really truly helpful and a great alignment piece from pre-K to K. Um, Middletown Public Schools is also now using this in their kindergarten and first grade, um, again, for the alignment piece. We always celebrate um, in different ways to show the number of words that have been read. And so here, the, these numbers here represent what our preschoolers, the youngest children in town, um, have done this year. There's other graphs that we could take a look at to celebrate or to, to hone in on what should we be looking deeper at? What can we improve upon? Um, and you can see that the four-year-olds in the community are using, are, are at the highest percentage here, which we're happy to know, um, especially because preschool and kindergarten are the two grades that have the lowest attendance in compared to the other grades um, due, due to COVID. So lots of things that we could see the amount of time spent on games, where parents learned, and what can we do with this and how can we continue um, our outreach, which we continue. Here is another implementation overview where we can see some more details about how often they're spending their time on the apps. And okay, whoops. So are there any um, so I'm looking at my time here. I did want to make sure that we, I shared another initiative. Um, so if you have any, any questions or you would like to know more about how we have um, been utilizing this program and the outreach efforts, you are more than welcome to reach out to me anytime and I can connect you to the right people um, or myself. So, um, and that's it. And we know that um, our children's vocabulary and skill level is increasing as a result of this program, which is going to lend itself to um, the application of our, of our play-based um, initiative that I'm going to share next. Um, before we start, and I don't want anybody to think I'm ignoring them, I can't see the chat very well because from my end, um, so again, Sheila, if there's anything like really big you want me to make sure I pause and answer, please let me know. Um, so I thought before we switch gears for the last um, part of the session that we could um, enjoy a little yoga breath, um, which is a reset. And this is a dolphin breath that young children enjoy and love. So we take our hands and we bring them together at our heart. 
and we take a big, big breath in through our nose, just like a dolphin. And again, because this is really childhood, that's how we reset. We breathe in through our nose, we take our hands up overhead, and then we're gonna dive into the water. And as we dive in, we do a big exhale and we say, ah. and we're gonna do that again. We are bringing oxygen to our brain. Take a deep breath in and a big exhale. And we say, ah, into the water. Isn't that so much, isn't that so much fun? And that is one of our wonderful yoga breaths. They're so fun and they help anchor us into the moment and they allow us greater access to our prefrontal cortex. So we are ready to learn and in the moment. Um, two little things to share. Again, back to that weather word. We are the weather wherever we are as the mother, the father, the parent, whatever, the teacher. Um, we are the weather. We control the climate around us. Okay, so starting with ourselves. Um, so as we think about play um, and that great vocabulary we are, we're, we're getting through experiences with our families and, and with footsteps, um, I chose a box. And so if we take a look at a box, um, what could this box be used for? And so my initial plan and in education, right? We monitor and adjust all the time. So my thinking here is that we will just write in the chat instead of breakout rooms. If anyone is too disappointed in that, please let me know. Um, we will share our thoughts. Um, when you look at the box, let's think about what could this box be used for? So being creative, taking a moment and just write a quick note in the chat of what could this box be used for? Thinking about play. All right. Ooh, I love that. Oh my goodness. These are amazing. I hope we'll be able to see these. Ah, I love it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Well, for anyone who, who said they weren't able to write because they're on Rue, I appreciate you being here and we are super grateful. So thank you. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. We have a train, a cozy spot, a robot, a dog house. Oh, I love it. Puppet theater, creating a zoo. You can draw animals, box, boxes, different types of animals. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. A train car, cave, robot head. Thank you, oopsies, whoops. All right, thanks for letting your creativity shine through here, everyone. Um, now you can keep, keep on thinking, or if you just take a moment and think about what did play look like growing up for you? And what skills do you think you acquired through your play? What did play look like? If anyone feels like jumping in and just sharing out loud what play looked like, that would be amazing, but you don't have to. Or writing it in the chat. Different is the definite, right? Play looked very different. Feel free to unmute. Okay. Sheila. Hi, for me, uh, growing up in a family of eight, well, there was six uh, of us uh, siblings. We did, you know, anything that we had at home, we tried to use it. So we would use our chairs and tables to make forts and blankets or, you know, build like a castle out of rocks and dirt. So we would just try to get as creative as we could with what we had because uh, financially it's like a tight budget for us. Uh, so, so that's how um, 
know, we kind of kept ourselves entertained with like outdoors, like using branches and playing, pretending like we're playing with swords. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing. It sounds so creative and natural, right? Using the things in our, in nature. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sheila, I'm shaking. Those are great. And those are things I did too as a kid. And I think that we were perhaps more independent than children today. Um, that less of that adult hovering and, and, and guiding us through. It was more of, you know, that independence of children just being and doing whatever. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. When thinking about independence, um, and yeah, obviously we didn't go into breakout groups. Um, how, um, and you just mentioned Sheila, that was one of the things that you were sharing is how play has changed over the course of the years. And we think about independence. Is there anything else that you could share that how play has changed over the course of the years? Mm -hmm. I, mean, we just, I guess uh -oh. I would say, with play changed, at least for me, I personally uh, no longer like sports or playing. Now, for me, it's more like gardening and, you know, playing like sports. So I think like the play, play scenarios kind of change and grow based off of your age. Um, so that's just, I think it's changed over the, the years for me. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, Dawn, it's Lady. I would like to add something if that's okay. Please do. Yes. I think that now kids are a little more idle, whereas before we used to be more creative. Um, it was more self-led, not, not um, prompted. Uh, we didn't need those prompts to get us started. For example, I remember just coming up with these crazy games with my siblings. One was where we would just pour soap on the floor and put on socks and we would pretend we were in an ice skating rink. <sighs> and kids nowadays, they don't think of things like that. They're always bored. So they don't ever think like, what can I do with what's here to, you know, have a little bit of fun or, or play a little, you know? My gosh, thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, I think that we are all seeing that. It's, I, I, that brings me back to the joys too of mud pies and all the crazy things that we would do that were just joyful and, and fun, right? And not teacher directed. Um, I so appreciate that. Yeah. I kind of, yeah. Sorry. No, no, <laughs> I kind of feel ahead. with what is saying that I think times changed and we've had to adapt to technology. So like yeah. back in the day, I didn't have a cell phone or anything like that. And now like I have my four-year-old who has a tablet and does everything through a tablet, you know, she does learning videos, games mm -hmm. through it. And they're so consumed on this tablet and technology that they forget to go outside and actually experience that at the real, you know, play and the real, you know, things that we as a child, you know, our childhood, we used to do. So it kind of seems like uh, nowadays, uh, you know, the children aren't really thinking outside the box and they're more like technology, technology, technology. And when the technology is gone, it's like they don't really know what to do because they're not experiencing it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And I think that's, that's been one of the, the things that we've had a lot of conversations about as well, um, which is why we are, the title of this was a balanced approach um, because bringing in the technology as a tool, but also, you know, keeping in mind what's mo what's super important for brain development and that's the, the play and the gross motor. And so I so, I appreciate that. Um, I think these are conversations we have to continue to have because we're just living in a completely different world. Um, so I do want to just share this real quick. Um, and if you are interested in learning more about this project, again, please reach out. I'm happy to share with you. This is a project that our district has embraced pre-K and K. It is called Purposeful Play Executive Function, but I would caution um, that it almost sounds, the word purposeful may sound very teacher directed. It's not. Um, in fact, it's extremely child centered. Um, it's about high expectations for kids aligned with standards, um, evidence-based in our district. We, we focus on um, the three, three R's, rigorous and relevant 
and relationships, of course, are so important. And I think that important to remember that play is very, very hard work for children. Um, it's not just go and play. Um, we're teaching children to, to sustain attention to task um, through this project. So, oh, did I say our wonderful consultant, Elizabeth Ashenbrenner? I apologize if I didn't say the name out loud. I have it written there. Um, and so we learn strategies together, um, all based around the brain. And so when we think about, and there's some wonderful videos um, through the Harvard Center for the Developing Child on executive function and how brains are built. And so we think about how brains are built and the importance of executive function and self-regulation. I could say as a former kindergarten teacher, I was very concerned about the kids that walked through the door who struggled and could not self-regulate. Um, and so what we're learning and being able to understand more of is how, how executive function, it, we have an opportunity to teach these skills um, and learning executive function and strengthening those skills is just like going to the gym. We can we strengthen our skills with practice. Same as mindfulness with practice. Um, and kids have lots and lots of distractions during the day. And how do they filter? How do we filter things out? Um, and so by learning more about executive function, how to support it, um, we're actually training children's brains and especially between ages three to five, that's the opportunity that we have in a large quick amount of growth is taking place during that time. Um, so when we think about there's two games here, two activities that, that are just some quick examples of the strategies. Um, if you think about your children and, and asking if they're playing a game together or they're following rules, um, first, first and foremost, if they're waiting their turn, they have to have inhibitory control. They have to pause um, and have that control, which takes a lot of practice. Um, if they're waiting on, on again for their turn, they have to have in working memory. What do I need to remember to do? Um, and last, cognitive flexibility in order to change the plan, because we know our plans change every day, and some children really struggle with being able to change the plan. So within this project, we talk about helping children be able to plan and predict. If they can plan and predict their day with a visual schedule, they are, they are more likely to feel at ease and calm um, and less anxious. And obviously in this day and age, we need anything we can to be less um, anxious and have things more predictable um, in our lives. Back to that um, real quick, we're also talking about how being intentional all the time and looking at our practices, perhaps, and even saying like, hmm, um, is this practice really truly meaningful for children? This linear calendar, that's another topic for another day along, um, but it does provide a more concrete visual representation of time for children. When they can see the progression of time stretching from left to right, they start to understand the concept more quickly. Um, executive function develops through that as well. And we have seen children, like even during free time, want to go and play. And I am going over time. I apologize. Um, this is one way that we're sharing amongst pre-KK alignment. Here is a wonderful um, example of what after learning the executive function strategies. This is just one um, demonstration of a kindergarten class in our district where the children are actually now engaged. This was pre-COVID, but we'll get back to it, um, and, and play play scenarios. So they work on their play plan, and then they take on certain roles, and then they go and they experience play. Um, and the goal is to keep them in that station, whatever they have chosen um, for a longer time period to build, to build their focus and, and attention and engagement. Um, and so at the end of this, I just wanna say, I always think this is super, super important for all of us. Um, again, back to the weather word, we are um, the weather wherever setting we're in um, and making sure that we keep ourselves on the top of our to-do list. And if you are interested and want to stay connected, which I do hope so, um, and 45 minutes goes really, really fast. Um, here are some of the ways to connect <laughs> with us, um, Facebook, Twitter, and um, our school page, of course. And I am super grateful that you took the time to be here and thank you. And I can't wait to come to more sessions in the next upcoming days as well. I'm going to um, stop my share. Oh, I see a lot.
of, okay, yes, play now, Sina. Oh, All right, thank you so much, everyone. I'm checking in to, on my chats to make sure I didn't miss anything major. Raise your hand if I did. <laughs> and do you have a question or something that you wanna share? Okay. Thank you, everyone, again, and especially thank you to the amazing providers and partners that I have on here. This is all the work we do in Middletown is a team, is a team approach. Um, and I see many of my Footsteps friends who have been nothing short of amazing um, and always there when I have questions and need help. So we are grateful. Oh, there was a lot of people. 